being able to personalize your avatar in Hytale will be extremely important, so I think it's time we take a look at the character creator. The character design in Hytale is much more complex than its predecessor Minecraft. Resolution is about 4 times higher and the character models are much more elaborate with more joints, hands, feet, ears, moving eyes and even eyelids. This design generally works really well. This is a much more complex game so they fit right in. But with the added complexity the design might fall slightly within the uncanny valley for some. So the avatars might appear a little off in those cases. This largely comes down to the proportions of the face, the large eyes and the lack of a nose. I don't think this is a massive issue since it's something you will get used to the more you're exposed to it, but I think it's possible to improve upon it just a little bit. When making skins in Minecraft, it is common practice to add eyelashes to indicate femininity, and it appears that Hytale has pretty much adopted this idea. Masculine avatars have no eyelashes at all, which looks quite odd when there is so much detail. Feminine avatars have something that resemble eyelashes, but they have this weird pink color. It's like they couldn't decide whether they wanted to add eyelashes or not, so they settled on this weird middle ground and made skin colored eyelashes. On characters with darker skin, there is a lot more color contrast for the eyelashes, which makes them appear a lot more distinct, which looks a lot better. In this example, the character also has smaller, more almond-shaped eyes, which looks really good. But this is where it becomes painfully obvious why they avoided adding distinct eyelashes. Just watch this. Yeah, that's going to give me nightmares. So since the characters blink, but the eyelashes don't move, it looks like they have an extra set of eyelids underneath. When they have their eyes closed, they look like some eyeless eldritch abomination or something. Now, to some of you this might not seem like a big deal. They blink extremely quickly after all, but it's a bigger issue than you think. First off, remember that the characters have expressions, so if they wink, the closed eye would be super obvious. And they also use their eyelashes to squint, and like, what about sleeping characters? They would look terrifying. So this is our first problem, we need better eyelashes. Now, I'm sure the art team is already aware of this issue, and they likely have a very good reason as to why they settled on the current solution, but I think there is an opportunity here to change this. In an earlier blog post, blinking was just a texture with two eyelids that slid up and down. This is likely an earlier iteration of the eyelids, which shows that it's probably changed before and they could probably change again. Now, let's uh, take the example from earlier and see how we can fix it. So the eyelids basically need to go from this to this. And the way we do that is by dividing the eyelashes into more components. In this case, the top eyelash can be divided up into three parts, which we can move down to create the desired shape. Here, there is also some eyelash left on the side, so we need to make that disappear as the eye closes. Then we need to place an eyelid underneath the eyelashes and make it stretch into place. And there we go. I think this is, uh, yeah, much better. Let's see what this god thinks. Now, I think there should be more variation in the types of eyelashes. They can make the character look really distinct, and we know there are different eye shapes, but ideally each type of eyes should have several variations with different eyelashes. When I tried making Link from The Legend of Zelda, I discovered that something looked really off. I made the hair and the outfit, but it just didn't look quite right. It just looked like someone in a Link costume, rather than the actual character. But look what happened when I added eyelashes. So yeah, you can see it makes all the difference. And the blinking looks way better in the second iteration as well. What helps it even more in this case is that since it looks a bit more cartoony, it moves away from the uncanny valley and ends up looking more normal. Here's another example, a character from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. This character wouldn't even look remotely accurate without their iconic eyelashes. And here are some characters made by Violet. You can see that adding the eyelashes and the eyeshadow really adds a lot. And being able to change the color of the eyelashes is also really important. If you want to be able to make an albino character for example, you would need to be able to add white eyelashes. And then you could make characters like Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen or Shiro from Dead Man Wonderland. So ideally, in the eye tab of the character creator, you should be able to select these things. Eye shape, eyelash shape, eyelash color, sclera color, pupils color, and of course, iris color. You should also be able to change all of this for each eye independently, so you can make a character with a damaged eye or a heterochromia. And yes, heterochromia is something real people have, it's not just anime characters. And ideally you should be able to add two different colors to each iris to achieve central heterochromia, though this could be possibly achieved with gradient mapping as long as the center is lighter than the edges. I just think having all these options is necessary, because in a game like this, it's really important that players can personalize their characters just right, and it would be a shame if someone couldn't do that because of some missing features. And adding many types of eyelashes will allow players to express their gender identity much better as well. So I assume you will be able to add your own custom assets for the character creator, but I think these will be limited to a world or a server, so anyone playing there can pick from those assets. So you will almost certainly not be able to use your own custom assets on another server. We need to keep this in mind when thinking about the character creator, so we can create categories that enable as much freedom as possible. 
The first category I think should be added would be facial features. I think a big problem with the faces in Hytale is that most of them look really similar. To spruce it up a little, you should be able to add facial features like cheekbones and wrinkles. It is particularly odd to see characters that are supposed to look old, but their skin is completely smooth. We've actually seen some variations to facial features, but I haven't seen like a tab where you can pick them from. I think there should be many different types of freckles. We've seen some elves with freckles, but never any humans, which is a shame. But there's freckles in the concept art. You should also be able to add makeup, so change the color of your lips, or add eyeshadow. I think adding custom scars is also quite important, as they are very personal and unique features that a character can have. We have seen a character with a scar before, but this was only across the mouth, meaning this was likely not a scar by itself, and just a mouth shape. These scars should instead be separate attachments that can be resized, rotated, and moved around on your character. It really doesn't have to be pixel perfect, and it will still look good even if resized or rotated. There could also be a larger variety of mouth types. So far we've seen plain lips, feminine lips, and a scarred lip, but we've never seen any mouth types with teeth or tusks. Adding teeth would allow you to make a more feral or vampiric character. Other possibilities could include beaks or other types of animal mouths. There could also be a few more ears. Here's some that come to mind. Bigger human ears, quebec ears, trork ears, uh, cat ears, goblin ears, fence stalker fins, and like droopy elf ears. I've also seen it pointed out that there should be a good selection of black features. Especially hair of black people is very versatile, and not many games take advantage of this. And a really big addition would be tattoos, body paints, and marks that cover the whole body. It should be simple for custom content creators to add textures as overlays onto the skin. So even if the tattoo selection was fairly limited, adding this as a category in the character creator would make it really simple to add custom tattoos. There's some opportunity here to create representation for people with skin conditions like Vitiligo. In addition to adding an overlay onto the skin, it should be possible to change the skin texture itself through a category called body type. This way you could add scales, feathers, a muscular build, and so on. Ideally, there would be an option to change your character's height and overall size. You would have to do this without changing the hitbox, but even so, it could still give players a slight edge in PvP situations, so you might want to limit this for servers without PvP. At the very least, you could limit the height variation in PvP servers so that the difference is too small to matter. I think uh, roleplaying servers really need this feature. And on the topic of diversity, I believe it's really important to add some representation for disabilities. The best way of doing this is by adding a whole separate category for prosthetics. You should be able to pick between many different types of prosthetics and which limbs you want replaced. And this wouldn't just be attachments either. The prosthetics would completely replace the model of the missing limbs and may even have different joints and animations to default limbs. In some cases, it would also have to affect the armor that you're wearing, with certain prosthetics resulting in a missing boot or gauntlet. This would also add some variety to characters even with armor on. Take for example Halo Infinite, which added prosthetics to the character creator which allowed for much more diversity. But aside from representation, who wouldn't want to be able to add prosthetics? Your avatar won't get much cooler than this. It looks like they might already be implementing this, since it's confirmed that they are on the same page here. My hope though is that they make it its own category and add tons of options to pick from. There are many cool possibilities in this area, so I'm waiting to be blown away with what the team can come up with. A small feature that I'd like would be hairstyle variations, where you can apply different colors to different parts of the hair. For example, one side is red, and the other side is white. Another way to be able to inject personality into the characters would be to add a category for mannerisms. This would dictate what the character animations look like. The way your character moves could indicate if you're a cheerful, whimsy, cheeky, charming, sad, angry, or a serious character. And you could also add more animations to make the characters even more expressive. For example, you could add blushing, sweat droplets. If the character is sick, if you, for example, throw poop at them, they could have like a green face overlay, or a blue face if they're cold, or a red face if they're hot or angry. Now, when it comes to colors, we know that you can change them using gradient mapping, which is great. Hopefully you can customize the gradients as much as you would be able to in Photoshop. Unfortunately, we've never seen assets with multiple color channels that you can apply colors to. That means you can only change the colors of one part of each attachment. For example, you can change the band around the straw hat, but it looks like you won't be able to change the color of the straw hat itself. When I made this model, I needed to change both the band and the straw color, since it was too green. If you take, for example, a shirt with a pattern, you should be able to change the color of that pattern and not just the shirt itself. Currently, you will likely only be able to use exactly the assets you are provided when you're on an online server. There aren't really any good ways of allowing every player to make their own assets to use on servers. There is however one thing that could be done, which is adding the ability to upload your own images that are around 20x20 20 20 pixels, which you could uh, then add to your own t-shirt. This would allow avatars to have a very personal detail to differentiate them from every other character. But of course, someone could add a picture of something completely obscene, so this might require a report system in place. At this point, the amount of customization and assets will be so extensive that it will likely be hard to find the parts you need. That is why it's important that assets are sorted by tags so they can be found more easily. These tags would also make it easier to disable certain categories on servers if you for example want everyone to wear medieval clothing, and then you can remove like the contemporary and futuristic stuff. That way you could add pretty much any cosmetic to the game without fear of making something that could look out of place in the game. And I think each cosmetic should have an alternate version as well, just like in The Sims. So each shirt can have different patterns which can have all their colors changed. 
and for example hoodies can have alternate versions with their hood up. There should also be an option to flip hair, clothing and accessories for better accuracy. Say maybe you have a character who's damaged the left eye, you might want to switch the eye patch to the other side. Assembling your characters can take a lot of work, so I think it's important to be able to save them and add them to a list of presets where you can switch easily between them. And instead of ending this video on a high note, I'm going to start nitpicking. You need to be able to move the attachments slightly and adjust the hair traps. In general, the edges of the hair should be made more seamless, so that the texture transitions into the planes. I've noticed certain faces are just a mirror of the opposite side, so they do not always line up correctly. And certain faces need to be flipped, like the top of the feet. This might have been fixed though. Okay, bye.